Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tech Motoring. On today's episode, we're gonna be going over some DC fast charging NAX adapters to charge your Ford vehicle at a Tesla supercharger. We're gonna be going over the differences between the ones and which one that you should buy for your vehicle. Hit that subscribe button, stay tuned. Let's take a look at our options. All right, everybody, welcome back. So as some of you may know, I have recently just picked up myself a 2025 Ford F-150 Lightning in a flash trim, and I absolutely love that vehicle. And of course, previous to that, a little over three years ago, we actually purchased a Ford Mustang Mach-E. And so having access to the Tesla supercharger network now has been amazing because of the ubiquitousness of the Tesla supercharger network and of course having that uh, awesome uptime by the chargers knowing that you're going to get there and not have all these chargers down and a line of cars lined up to charge. It's always nice to have a extra place to charge your vehicle on a road trip. And so today we're gonna to talk about what you need in order to make that happen. How do you charge your Ford vehicle at a Tesla supercharger and what equipment do you need? Well, clearly if you own a Ford Mustang Mach-E or a Lightning, you do not have the NAX port on your vehicle, which means you do not have a port that looks like this, like a Tesla plug. You have a CCS1 port on your vehicle and that means you need an adapter to adapt from the version 3 Tesla superchargers to a CCS uh, port that is on your vehicle. So what does that mean? That means that you need to get an adapter. Now if you were an early adopter like I was and you got a Ford vehicle pretty early you know that you got a adapter for free, which was actually really nice of Ford to do. But recently they are no longer offering the free adapters. You now have to pay for those adapters and they are $200 on the Ford parts site. However, you may want to consider that or you may want to consider going with a third party. Now I do caution you to be very careful when doing any type of third party adapter because keep in mind that you are responsible for any damage that occurs to your vehicle and the adapter and possibly the charging station if anything were to go wrong and you do want to have some backup and what I mean by that is you want to be using an official adapter. So Ford says this is the adapter that you should be able to use with your vehicle if something were to happen at that point, at least you can prove that you actually were doing everything correctly and you weren't using some uh, third party knockoff cheap adapter that you picked off on Amazon and said, this will work for 50 bucks. It looks perfectly fine. Future Paul here for a quick snippet here. So it turns out that the UL2252 standard was actually official as of March of this year, 2025. So that means that in the event that you are looking for a third party company adapter, make sure that it is UL2252 approved and make sure that it's not just built to the standards of UL225, but has been approved by a body that approves it to the UL2252 standard. It has to have that UL logo and UL listing on that adapter. Now, that's not the only thing you should do with this. You should also be verifying that your vehicle manufacturer supports third-party adapters that are UL2252 uh, certified. Because right now, a lot of the manufacturers are only supporting their own adapters, the adapters that were given uh, the adapters that were given by them to you for their vehicles or sold by them to you for their vehicles. So if you're going to do third party, only buy the UL2252 adapters that are certified and show that they are certified, not just, you know, they followed the, the procedures for it, basically, but actually got it certified. And of course, if you always check your manufacturer of your car, make sure that they also are OK with you using a third party adapter. That is UL2252 certified. So that means you should start looking for adapters with that particular 
uh, certification attached to it. And if that is the case, then I highly recommend you get one of those. And I believe there's only one right now. That is the Amphenol DC fast charging adapter, which unfortunately I do not have with me here today. It's brand new and I just haven't had my a chance to get my hands on one. However, what I do have here in front of me are three adapters. We do have the official newer version of the Ford DC fast charging adapter. We have the old version here, and then we have a Lectron adapter here. And I'm gonna talk about why we have the Lectron here after I just said don't use third-party adapters, but I promise you there is a reason for that. So let's start with the oldest one first, which technically is the Tesla partnered one that Ford gave out initially. Now this one here, as you can see, is a pretty small adapter. And this was one that Tesla is actually technically the manufacturer of. They are building these specifically for you know certain manufacturers. You might see a couple of these uh, that look exactly like this from other manufacturers as well. Ford was one of the first people to actually uh, contract these out to get them out to customers once again for free. And uh, this is the one that I got for free with my Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now, funny thing is, is that I actually did not get this one for free. I actually ended up having to send back the initial adapter because it was defective as we found out on a road trip last year. Now, unfortunately, even though we did have an adapter failure, uh, it was something that Ford had identified and Ford said, we are going to get you a replacement adapter and then you just send the old adapter back to us. Okay, no big problem. And they did just that. So this is actually the replacement adapter. So this is an official adapter from Ford, manufactured by Tesla in some sort of partnership. And this is the one that you may get or you may see. However, if you are looking for more recently, well, some of Ford's official adapters, you might actually be looking at this one here right in front of us. Now, this one is actually manufactured in partnership with Electron, and that's why I have the Electron here with me today, because you can actually see that they are very similar in uh, shape, size, design, all very similar in a lot of different ways. Now, if you are going to buy an adapter for your Mach-E or your F-150 Lightning, I highly recommend going with this one. Please do not buy one of those 50 or even $100 adapters off of Amazon. I've gotten many requests on this channel to review those adapters and I refuse them all because they are not safety certified in any way, shape or form. And I do not have a way to confirm that the adapter is good. And personally, I don't want to put my own products at risk or the charging station at risk or anything else at risk by testing these uh, cheap adapters. I will not be uh, doing any adapters uh, for testing except for official adapters. So this is the Ford adapter here. You can see they actually got their Ford logo put on it. It is just CCS on this side. And you can see it's got a little bit of this extra plastic piece on the end versus the original Tesla one there. And that is where the NAX connector will go into. So this is the official adapter. You can see you have your nice metal release up here, and then you have your release down here for the NAC side. Very, very nice. And there's a couple other features on this one and this one that I want to talk about in a little bit. But first, I want to bring in the Lectron adapter. Now, this is Lectron's uh, Vortex adapter. They reached out to me a while back about reviewing this particular adapter. And I did so because of Electron as a brand. I felt a little bit more safe with their design and their adapter. And uh, I did do a review on it and it has held up pretty well. In fact, this one got us out of the bind when the Ford or Tesla adapter failed on us. Uh, this one I just happened to have with me and this got us out of a charger bind. Uh, on our way back from Florida. So I'm very happy that I got this adapter and I actually kept it in my car with me because yeah, that helped tremendously with that road trip. But you can see that the design of this is a little bit familiar. It's the same exact thing as the Ford adapter. Obviously this was what Electron designed first and then Ford just said that looks good, let's go with it. Slight design changes, like for instance, this looks a little bit 
thicker here on this side. Um, the release mechanism on the bottom here for the Naxxen does seem a little bit thicker on the uh, Electron one versus the Ford one. Now there is one major difference between the Electron manufactured adapter and the Ford approved ones. And that is an interlock pin. Now, if you look on the inside of the DC pins here on the bottom of this adapter, you will see a pin. And that pin gets pushed into the adapter when you put this into the car. Now, what that does is that locks this bottom connector here, the release for the knack side. And with that extra safety feature, that does prevent you or potentially somebody else from unplugging the charging handle at its Tesla supercharger by utilizing that pin. Pin pushes in, it locks this out, which means it locks the ability to pull out this handle. So you can't just go up to this, pull up on this and yank out the Tesla handle. Now, typically when you pull up on this, it makes that clicking sound. You hear that clicking sound. That is actually a safety to cut off charging at that point. However, if you're really quick about it, you could potentially still yank out the Tesla handle. Uh, and of course, with all that voltage and all that amperage going through that handle and into this adapter, you definitely don't want to have um, any type of arcing between those two products there. So that's why Ford said, I want to see that interlock pin there. I do not want to have people have the ability to just yank out the Tesla cable or, you know, lift up on this and yank it out. They wanted to be a little bit more safe about it. And so therefore they put that pin in there in between the two DC pins. Now that is one thing that is missing on the Electron adapter. They have not manufactured their adapters with that DC pin in there to lock the cable, which means that you could potentially lift this up and pull the cable out while it's still charging, technically. Now another thing that's slightly different between the Electron adapter and the Ford Electron partnership adapter is the method in which they recommend that you plug it into the vehicle. Now, by looking at the instructions here of the Electron adapter, it is recommended by Electron to plug this into the vehicle first, then plug the NAX handle into the adapter. That is what was told to me by Electron representative. It is also here in the instructions. Whereas the Ford supplied one, and I do have the instructions right here, it does say attach the supercharging handle to the adapter first before plugging the adapter into the vehicle. So they also sort of changed the procedure in which you need to do to plug it in to the adapter and then plug it into the car. Other than that, these are what I would recommend the best adapters that you can look for for your Ford vehicle, really any vehicle. But if you have another manufacturer of vehicle, I'm sure they sell their own NAX adapter that you could pick up. And in that case, I would recommend that one. But if you have a Ford and Mach-E or a Lightning, I highly recommend getting one of these two adapters. This one might not be something you could come by anymore because I think they've pretty much fully replaced it with this one. But of course, this one as well from Tesla, it does have that pin there in the middle to lock it to the charging handle as well. And so with that, you do have that extra safety feature there from the Tesla manufactured one. So I feel pretty confident regardless of which one of these you buy, I think you're going to have a pretty good adapter. And there's another brand on the market called A to Z that also makes one. I have yet to get my hands on that particular adapter. So I don't know specifics about that one or how it works or how it's different than these here in front of me. But what I can tell you is that the Electron is a good brand. And if you're looking for a third party adapter, then Electron does make a pretty decent one. Of course, missing that interlock pin, but not a big deal there. And then of course, if you do have a Ford vehicle, I would just recommend splurging. Use some of those Ford rewards points that you get and buy yourself the new Ford Nax adapter here. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for today's episode. I hope this was somewhat informative. I just kind of wanted to lay these out because there's so many things right now 
that can confuse a new EV owner or even one that's, you know, had a couple of EVs and maybe you're just buying your first Mach-E or your first F-150 Lightning and you're saying to yourself, well, what adapter should I buy? Do I get the one from Ford? Do I buy a third party one and save some money? Well, my opinion on that is don't save yourself any money. Buy a good product, buy a good brand and get the confidence that you need when you go on those road trips. So that's my recommendation. I hope this helped you out. I'll link some videos down in the description below if you're interested in them. And of course, I'd like to thank you very much again for watching. And remember, welcome to the future and welcome to tech motoring. We'll see you on the next one.